Good morning, gentlemen, and what a grand morning it is, too. We have just cause for celebration. Galloway and Phelps are sending another fiend to San Quentin. A nice showy trial, and he'll be strapped down with gas seeping into his tiny reptile brain. Now, the fresh business. Galloway and Phelps, the task is at hand. The address is on the hill, north downtown off Fremont Avenue. Hello, welcome back. I am Detective Jeff Shepard, and my player is Cole Phillips. Welcome to episode, uh, sorry, part 10, Homicide Case, The White Shoe Slaying. As you see, she almost got hit in the opening, uh, um, opening cutscene, and there was a guy creeping around, which is never a good thing, but, uh, let's see what, uh, we have today. Skipper, is the new letter genuine? Now, boys, we all know how many imbeciles have confessed in the short case. Again. Ray Pinker will let us know in good time. Fine morning, indeed. We keep locking them up, but the bodies keep piling up. Yeah, California's love a fad, Phelps. As long as the bricks hold up in San Quentin, there'll always be killers in this town to send. Hey, that's that cop. Seems like a decent guy. Greetings from sunny California. When's it gonna stop? The hell this guy's doing? Mister, that's not a very nice tone to have towards the cops, uh, especially a detective. I might have to arrest you next time if you keep that up. Alright, let's check. Oh, that's a clue. Coach right on, because it's still early on. And as always, Mr. Detective You're behind the wheel. is going to drive for us. First the letter, and now another body. Come on, you can't keep on telling me there's not a killer still out there. You know, Phelps, all these arrests on your record are giving you a reputation. You don't want them turning into unsolved. Getting a vicious killer off the streets is more important than my reputation. Really? And besides, landing a big fat marlin is more impressive than an ocean full of minnows. The minnows make it the man, Phelps. You can't always hit home runs. Sometimes you just gotta make first base. Somewhat true. Detectives? Phelps and Galloway, homicide. Scene secure. The rest of the patrolmen are going door to door, canvassing for witnesses. Thanks. Keep me informed. Will do, Detective. This looks awfully familiar. I think that's the impression the boys from the Examiner took with them as well. There's nothing original under the sun. Why should murder be any different? What do we have so far? Not much trace evidence to speak of. Storm blew in around 10 last night, and the rain washed most of it away. And the body? Looks like she was tipped out of an automobile from the tire tracks and superficial injuries. Strangled with a length of rope. And for my money, it's triple braid again. Mm. Time of death. From her temperature, maybe 2 a.m., but it was cold last night. Usual head injuries. Blunt force trauma. Knock him over the head, then strangle and mutilate. No message with this one. At least she was left clothed. I doubt My very much he was exactly. concerned with her dignity. The green silk dress is very distinctive. Any sign of her other shoe? No. And no handbag or other personal effects. So this she is clothed, not naked and on display for everyone to see. <clears throat> Sorry, I looked at his dog breeder. There appears to be a dry cleaning label. Superior Laundry Services, F1363. So no jewelry in that one. Nothing there. No drag marks. Killer was moving around, surveying the scene. A lot of footprints. 
So it's actual, not really part of the case at all. <clears throat> Just part of the trash that's left. Our driver and our killer are most likely one and the same. It's very possible. There's something we hear though. Incidental. So there's money. So that means that she might have had a wallet with her, but it's hard to say for sure. I'll call you when I know something. Meanwhile, get on with the case. <clears throat> Sounds good. Detectives, I've been working the houses across the street and up the block. This lady thinks she has something for us. Detective Phelps, LAPD. I'm Mrs. Barton, Catherine Barton. I live just across the way. Did you see anyone around here last night? Not last night, but yesterday, early evening, I saw that awful hobo. Do you have a description? Tall, gaunt. Horribly disfigured. I think he may have had an accident in the war. He's a very scary, angry man. Any idea where we might find him? One of the hobo camps around here. He's some kind of hobo leader. They all follow him around. Thank you, ma'am. You've been a big help. Of course. Anything I can do to help. I'd hate to think that something so ghastly could happen right here and nothing be done about it. Well, that is not the case, but uh, thank you for being honest with us. <clears throat> Cole Phelps, badge 1247. How can I help, Detective? I need an address on Superior Laundry Services. Just a moment. Superior Laundry Services. 1260 West 1st Street. Can you track down reports of hobo camps in the vicinity of Signal Hill? Just a moment, Detective. There's a large camp under the bridge on Grand between Temple and Sunset. Thanks, ma'am. All right. So that little bit of information, let's go check out the hobo camp that's closer in the area. <clears throat> I fought. Where's my wife? Uh, no more. No, nobody cares about me. I took a We're looking for a tall man with a disfigured face. Do you know him? Huh? What? I fought in two wars, you know, son. I think I earned some peace and quiet. Ah, oh, the bum isn't here. Look at these people. We should follow the old lead. These guys yeah. can wait. No, huh. There's the Maldonado and all the others. There are more factors to consider than the messages, Rusty. This doesn't fit your pattern, Cole. End of conversation. A little bit of an uneasy conversation, though.
Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. We're investigating a case, and one of your laundry labels came up. F-1363. If you give me a minute, I'll go find a register, and you can take a look. You take a look for yourself. I've got clothes that need pressing. Mm -hmm. Not very talkative. You wrote the number down on that dress, <laughs> is it there? This is T. Terrelson, 43 Emerald Street, Westlake. All right, let's go to the next location. <clears throat> you know the way. You can drive. Yes, sir. Yes? Detectives Phelps and Galloway. Is your wife home, sir? My wife went out last night and she hasn't come home. Can you describe your wife and what she was wearing? We were out at a friend's place, Bobby Ross's, for a party. She was kind of dolled up. She had her green silk dress, open-toed white shoes. Those are her favorite shoes. Can we come in, Mr. Tarleton? I'm afraid we have some rather bad news. Do you have someone who can look after your children, Mr. Terrelson? I've been trying to arrange a sitter. Look, tell me what's happened. I'm afraid your wife was murdered last night. Her body was found this morning. We're very sorry for your loss. I know this is a difficult time, Mr. Terrelson, but we are going to need you to answer some questions. First, we're going to take a look around. What for? You don't think it's that... It's procedure. You see to your girls. Stay here till Daddy's finished talking to these men. Where's Mommy? Everything's gonna be all right, sweetheart. We would like Mommy to come home now, Daddy. What's the problem, Terrelson? Let him search. You got nothing to hide. You want to hear something funny, Terrelson? Some bums think Operator, pulling out give me R and I. Report actually rules him out as a suspect. Putting you through now. Phelps, badge twelve forty-seven. Can you run an address for a Bobby Ross? Then send some uniforms over. Would you like him picked up? No. Suspect says he was with Ross last night. We need to confirm the alibi. I'll get a prowl car <clears throat> dispatched. Thanks. Check if she was a regular. If you'd excuse me, ladies. Nope. Down the purse. So she went out without her handbag? Very fishy. At least she was spared that particular indignity. Yep. She'd have to be in quite a state to leave this behind. 
She might have been. It's hard to say for sure, though. Again with the boots. We could see if Pinker can match the impression to the crime scene. Hmm. Lars was out in the rain last night. Definitely suspicious. Uh, might have to go crush him on that pretty soon. I'll be out of your way momentarily, ladies. Another handbag. Hmm. Doesn't look like anything. Baron's bar again. Someone must be real sweet on this dive. I wonder why the picture was turned down. That might be it. For the record, Mr. Tarleton, what is your wife's name? Teresa. Do you have any idea why anyone would want to hurt your wife? No. Everyone loved Teresa. She was so full of life. It can't be anyone who knew her. Uh, I might be honest. So you don't know anyone who would want her dead? No, I don't. You said you went to a party at Bobby Ross's place? That's right, Bobby had a bunch of people over. We were having a good time. She said she was bored and decided to leave. Mmm, that one might And? I was playing pinochle with some of the guys. Teresa had a few belts too many. She said she wanted to go out dancing. Mm. Mr. Terrelson, was Teresa happy at home? Yeah, I think she was. Spill it, Terrelson. We like the look of you for this, so you better give us something. We're at the party. She has a few and says she wants to go out dancing. We only have the sitter until nine. I get mad. I tell her to go ahead, but I'm staying. She storms out. Look, I'm doing well at cards. I hardly ever do well. I married her because she was so much fun, but now she drives me fucking crazy. What time did she leave the party? About 8.30. Maybe a little earlier. When was the last time you saw your wife? Around 8.30. The card game at Bobby's was wrapping up. I played out my hand and drove home here. Paid the sitter and went to bed. He hasn't looked away. Why did you only report your wife missing this morning? I thought she would have called up last night from the bar. If Bobby Ross doesn't it's... confirm your story, we are going to come back here and pick you up. This doesn't look good, Lars. Definitely not too good. Appreciate your time, sir. You believe this guy's story? Kind of rings true. I'm pretty sure a few of those were uh, back You home. drive. I need to go over the case notes. Fine. Where are we headed? You can drive. And where no. exactly are we going? Gents, drink? Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. I'm Benny Clough. This is about Teresa Terrelson? Yes, it is. I heard about it on the radio. They're saying it was that Black Dahlia freak again? God damn it. Yeah, you know, I rang that husband of hers. The babysitter said he was out. If you don't mind, we have a few questions. What time did Teresa leave? Uh, around uh, 10.30, I think. On foot, in a car, by bus, how was it? 
She called for a cab. Did you get the number? Sure I did. I like Teresa. The only time she has a drink is when things aren't going so good at home. I was worried about her. She wants a five-star goddamn way. Put out an APB on the cab. 3591. Should be traceable. Who was she with? We've had reports about a tall, gaunt-looking hobo. He wasn't here last night? I get plenty of bums in here. But nothing to fit that description. Hmm, he looks away, but it looks like he might be telling the truth. You've never served him. Not a chance. By the sound of it, he's the type of bum you send packing right when he walks through the door. Hmm. Any idea where she was headed? Uh, nope. I didn't get that. She was murdered, Benny. Brutally murdered. If you like this lady, you should give us something. You telling me I'm not cooperating? Watch it, pal. You want us to catch the guy, sir? We need information, not cute answers and delaying tactic. I do my best, goddammit. What do you want from a guy? Any of your regulars know the broad? Ask him yourself. LAPD, keep your seats, boys. This won't take a second. Uh-oh. We can't let the son of a bitch get away. LAPD, what are you running from, sir? There he is, Come on. officer. You gotta ride. Get in and drive. I thought you were gonna leave me there. Who knows what this guy will pull when he's cornered. We could have a killer on our hands. I don't think the killer would be kicking back in the bar where he met the Vic in. Listen, a creature of habit is your killer. For some reason, they're sticklers for routine. Don't go to sleep on me. Get me back in close. <clears throat> Always a cop chase. Hit it. Clean this asshole off the road. Keep it steady and I'll try to bust his tires! Let's end this farce. Alright, alright, you got me. I've had enough. Put your hands in the air! Hey guys, show Name, me. Richard Bates. What is it you want? I'll ask the questions. Firstly, why did you run? I don't mix with cops if I can help it. Last night, you went drinking with a lady in the bar. Now she's dead, and your face is all messed up. I'm in the clear on that. She preferred a sailor. You could lay it off on him. Are we finished? Do you want my partner to sap you? Tell us what we want to know. She was okay, drunk, pissed off at her old man, wanting to go dancing. I thought I'd ply her with a few drinks and get my end away. Looks like your salty had the same idea. So what happened when you left the bar? Sailor boy laid one on me. A cheap shot. After that, I don't know. What happened to the woman? Your guess is as good as mine. Mm. We're taking you in, Bates. How come? Just for a chat. Nice private chat. I'll explain my theory of once a degenerate, always a degenerate. Take him to Central. He's a material witness in a murder case. Find him a cozy cell. Richard here knows the drill. That one might have been a uh, bad cop, possibly. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. I need an APB out on a yellow cab, number 3591. Ask dispatch to relay all sightings to car 11K. No problem. I'll get on the radio. Are there any incident reports filed in the vicinity of Barron's Bar on North Beaudry Avenue? We're tracking a sailor who was involved in a fight outside the bar. I can check the reports, detective. 
I have a message for you from Captain Donnelly. Message reads, James Jessup, U.S. Navy Able Seaman, has information relevant to your case. Jessup is currently being detained at Central Station. Could be our man. Thanks for your help. So we're going back to the station. Unfortunately, I don't think I can do the. You're other behind the wheel. Yep. Yeah. Take residence. He's in interview two. Thanks. What do you make of him? Sailor on furlough who looks like he's in trouble and knows it. I'm good to know. Detectives Phelps and Galloway, we know why you're here, Jessup, so it would be best if you answered our questions truthfully. I don't want any trouble. That's why I'm here. I heard on the radio about this lady getting killed. I got leave from my CO to come down straight away. So why did you kill her? I didn't kill anyone. Look, you need to believe me. Let's start at the beginning. You went to Barron's Bar. What time did you arrive? I got a 24-hour pass. I got there around 7. That's where you met Teresa Terrelson? Sure. We had a couple of drinks. So you tried to make a woman who was incredibly drunk? Look, I'm not proud of myself, but I never hurt her. You took her dancing? That's right. Caught a cab to the Crystal Ballroom. You had a fist fight with Richard Bates over Mrs. Terrelson. You met the guy? He's a creep. You should take a look at him for this. He's pointing the finger directly at you, Jessup. I only had one night before I was back in the tub. He had all the time in the world to look for some action. I belted him. I'd do it again. She was better off with me. Sure. You're a shining example of chivalry, Jessup. We're holding you till we can clear this with the driver. Yeah, my CO said as much. Can you put the guy in two in a cell and inform the commander? Sure, detective. Got a message for you. Sighting of your disfigured hobo on Grand between Temple and Sunset. And it looks like the bow has a record, too. He's wanted in connection with two female assaults. Thanks. Can you drive to this one? Okay, good. we finally go to that one now. Shotgun. Try again, round two. What's the first rule of Fight Club? You don't have to. Copa said it. We need to hold out to the cavalry. How do we do that? Like this. Fuck that. Keep him down, Felt. You want Disciples know what you did last night? We need to fight for it! Get that disgusting son of a bitch and the rest of his acolytes. And you went. We're doing the right top of cut. What's your name? Comrade Stalin. Very funny. <laughs> we'll find out from your personal effects. Stuart Ackerman. You're under suspicion for murder, Ackerman. We're taking you downtown. You. You can't do anything more to me than what the Japanese have already done. <clears throat> Let's check out his belongings and see what we can find. The Kremlin's over here, Phelps. Toss it, see what you find. So we already searched his place a bit. This doesn't pertain to the case. Mm-mm. Ackerman doesn't look like much of a dancer. Uh oh, rope. 
and it's got blood on it. Looks familiar. Safe bet it'll match the mark under Teresa Terrelson's chin. Yeah, it's a good possibility that he's also the murderer. Ah, the famous paper. Fentanyl. Uh oh. Still working, Jack. I'm off to the Lighthouse Club in Santa Monica. Hello, Jack. Mr. Benson, this is Courtney Sheldon. He's a buddy of mine from the war. Well, I'm sure you two will want to polish some old war stories. <clears throat> Good evening, Jack. Mr. Sheldon. Good night, sir. Take a seat, Courtney. We need your help. Jack, I told you I would have nothing to do with that. I'm fine too, Jack. Medical school's going well. I got a part-time job. Do dope peddlers need part-time jobs? We made a mistake and we're in trouble, Jack. A local gangster, Mickey Cohen, is putting on the squeeze. So hand it over, walk away. What's stopping you? We had a deal with them that they would dole it out slowly. They said they would supply abortion clinics and doctors, but they've been moving it on to addicts, and they can't cope with the purity. So your problem is with gangsters being dishonest. My problem is that people are dying, and that if this gets back to us, we'll all end up in jail. So how am I supposed to help, Courtney? This isn't the war. I can't just wave a magic wand and clean up your mess. We want you to negotiate, Jack. The only thing these guys understand is force, Sheldon. They got to the top back east by proving to be more vicious than the English, the Irish, and the Dutch. They make their own laws. That's the nature of a secret society. God's sake, Courtney, you want to be a doctor. How can you fight with that? We are better trained. I didn't make it through the war to come back to this kind of shit, Sheldon. Mm -hmm. It's on 7th Street. Let's hit it, Phelps. The cab driver might tie this whole thing together. I hope you're right. The husband has an alibi, but no real motive other than neglect. Jessup's alibi check. We're going this way. Ackerman, you were in the Marines. How do you know? The Corps selected big guys for flamethrower duty. That's how you got the burns. Life expectancy was five minutes for a guy in flamethrower detail. What kind of a government puts weight like that on a man's shoulders? You'll get no argument from me. It was a heavy load. You feeling sorry for this smelly fuck? Why did you kill Mrs. Terrelson? I have no recollection of the people I have killed. You hate women, Ackerman? More than you could ever imagine. How much did you hate Mrs. Terrelson? I ache to put my seed in them. Afterwards, I have no use for them. That's a very disturbing... A bus driver dropped Mrs. Terrelson near your camp around 2 a.m. Why did you take her up to the hill? Which hill? I have many places. I go where I please. You are clearly insane, Ackerman. The state of California does not execute mental patients. I don't know the names of the women I've killed, but I've killed many of them. But their necks are so fragile. Stuart Ackerman, I am charging you with the murder of Teresa Terrelson. A man down on his luck, I can abide. But a filthy red who chooses to live outside the rules of society, I cannot stomach. Maybe poor threes of Tarleton will provide the catalyst we need. 
I've spoken to the chief and the mayor, and I think it's time we send some men in to remove the godless and send them on their way over the county line. A grand day that will be, gentlemen. And a grand result you have brought me. You two are fast becoming my finest crusaders. Including the homicide case, the white shoe slaying. Also, if you uh, are all enjoying the playthrough of uh, LA Nuo on the PS4, don't forget to uh, leave a like and a comment. I do read the comments all the time. I also uh, like them, comment back to them as well. So there's always feedback to be given. Do appreciate that if there is any. But uh, if you are enjoying the, the playthrough of them, don't forget to leave a uh, subscribe, like, and comment, and stay tuned for more. This is Detective Drew Shepard signing